Hi guys, it's good to see you. I'm excited to show you this next little video that we're doing here. I got my kids in the background playing with bubbles. That's something we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be showing you how to make an awesome bubble, um, a little bubble wand, and then also how to make your very own bubble solution. First, I'm going to show you a little, little example in pottery, ceramics. I enjoy throwing, um, throwing pots, cups, vases, bowls, you name it, on the pottery wheel. I've done it since high school, and it's a good little, good little hobby to pick up. So why are we starting with clay? Why are we starting with ceramics? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, water has some amazing properties. One of the properties that is so cool is called surface tension. Now, surface tension happens because water forms these bonds. They form these hydrogen bonds. And they're super strong and super flexible. But on the surface of the water, think about the surface of the water, there's no bonds that are happening up here between the water. So the hydrogen bonds that are right on the surface of that water are so much stronger than the ones that are underneath, like in the, in the center part of the water. And so that surface tension is what, uh, it, it's what gives water its unique properties. So if you put a bunch of drops of, drops of water on the head of a penny, you can make almost a little dome that sticks up probably like almost a centimeter of just water, just from the surface tension. Same thing, if you, uh, if you have water in a glass, you can fill the water, see the glass is up here, you can fill the water above that glass, and it'll hold there because of the surface tension. So why are we talking about clay at all? Well, clay, like water, you can add different things to it. Take, for example, this clay right here. This is a white body clay, and it'll make the final product a very, a very white, um, a very white clay or tannish clay. This one right here, this has a lot of iron oxide that's added to it, and because of that, the finished product will be much redder and much darker. So you can almost have a, a black clay, and then you can have a white clay. Good one, good one back there. So, by adding different things to the clay body, you can change its behavior, and you can change uh, what it does. This clay is great for throwing. It's very smooth, it's very supple. Now, you can take the same clay, and you can add a lot of sand to it. Sand or grog. Grog is clay that's been fired and then ground up. And you can take that, and then you can use it if you're a sculptor. So sculptors have this clay that's really rough to the touch. You can almost see the particles of sand in it. But because of it, it makes it a super strong clay for sculpting. And it makes it very stable when you're firing it. A lot of times, if you make a pot and it doesn't have even walls, this thing, when you put it up to, to it goes up to 2,000, almost 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit, 2,350. When it goes that high, if these walls aren't very um, uniform, it can actually explode. So the sand and the grog and sculpting and sculpting clay really helps it stable out. Now, just like you can add things to the clay, you can add things to water to change its properties. So we talked about surface tension, how, how it has incredibly strong surface tension. Surface tension. Well, that's not too good for bubbles. If you try to blow a bubble and it's got super strong or very strong surface tension, the bubble's not going to want to form. It's going to want to collapse on itself. But if you add things like soap, you can change the properties of the water. You can make that surface tension not so strong. And just like that experiment with the penny or the water, if you take your finger after you have that bubble of water up top, dip it into the soap and then touch that, see what happens. Uh, it's not going to be able to hold up because the soap's actually getting in between those bonds. It's separating the bonds. The soap, unlike water, has a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end to it. So one end of the soap loves water and the other end like hates water. It repels it like crazy. And that's what makes it so good at cleaning things because it can attach to grease and help the water wash it away. So, if we take advantage of some of those things, like if some of the properties of soap mix it with water, you can create an amazing bubble solution. And that's what we did over here. So I'm going to give you guys a base bubble solution. I'm going to give you little instructions to make some of these bubble wands. And then I want to see what you guys come up with. You're going to be using just things around the house. So sugar, if you have corn syrup, if you got any bakers in the house, corn syrup is sometimes in there. Uh, what else did we add? We tried glycerin. Glycerin is really good at um, if you make 
icing. It keeps the icing, it can make it smoother. So probably no one's gonna have glycerin around the house. I had to go to Joann's uh, or Michael's to go pick it up, but it's definitely worth it if you can grab it. We got some amazing bubbles. I didn't know if you catch that one, but uh, there we had a lot of fun this whole week we were doing it. Doing it. So, oh, there's one from Jackson. Good job, buddy. <laughs> nice. Hey, Joe, where are you? So I didn't make much here, but I'm going to let Joe go ahead and finish it off. So thank you guys. I'll get another video out next week, and I'll also continue this one, and we'll go. Uh, we'll show you. Ooh, nice one. Joe, can you finish this off for us? Oh, thanks, Joe. So we'll see you guys soon. I will show you guys how to do all this, and Joe's going to finish off our pottery. Oh, looking good, Joe. <laughs> Hi friends, here's a quick little rundown of this week's project. I made so many batches of soap and I found some pretty good good winners, but I'll give you the base, the base recipe, which is one part liquid soap and six parts water. So I had a measuring cup that measured ounces, so I would put about two ounces of soap and 12 ounces of water, and then one or two other ingredients. Uh, corn syrup worked really well. I uh, dissolved some sugar in some water and added that to a few of them. Glycerin, there's baking powder, gelatin. Here's the strings that I used. I tried rope and string. The string worked a little better for me, but we'll see what, what you guys come up with. Also, I have these two sticks. I use dowel rods, but you can use sticks or branches, whatever you can find. And you're gonna take about a 24 inch piece of string and a 36 inch piece of string, tie them both to either end with a nut washer or a nut on the bottom to hold it down. It's gonna make like a little triangle that you can open and close. Here is an example of the surface tension in action. You can see a big old bubble of water on there. And then here's the penny, let's see if I can get it in focus. Yeah, same thing. So surface tension is really cool. So see if you can do this yourself at home. Get your finger a little soapy after you have that nice dome and touch here and then touch on that glass as well and see what happens. So hope you and your family are doing well. Hope you guys enjoy this week's project. And I will see you guys next week. Take Okay, a couple of last things. The recipes that use sugar or corn syrup work much better the next day or even the day after. Second thing is there'll be a downloadable worksheet in the comment section below the video. Okay, take care. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Joe. Making your own bubble mix?